For our last story today, let's start with a vastly loved dish, the bruschetta. You know, toasted bread served with tomatoes and other vegetables. Many of us call it bruschetta. It's a common mistake. Soon it would be a punishable offense because Italy has come up with a new law and it is taking linguistic purity to a whole new level. So here's what the law says. You cannot use foreign language words in official documentation, not even English words. And those who don't follow this will face penalties. We're talking about fines up to $109,000. Italy's culture ministry is the new language police. It will monitor the correct use of language and pronunciation. The law has not been passed yet. There will be a parliamentary debate. But it has the support of the Italian Prime Minister, Giorgia Meloni. Those of you watching us from India may remember she was in India last month. Now she's pushing for a language law, and it's not surprising. Maloney has been on a cultural integrity rampage. She's been trying to protect Italy's culture and heritage. Earlier, she backed a ban on synthetic cuisine. Riteniamo poi che questo fenomeno. Synthetic food does not guarantee the safeguard of our culture and our tradition. Let's say it with pride. So this is about pride. First the food, now the language. They want to protect it from foreign influence. But the main target of this law is English or Anglomania. Excessive admiration for the English language. That's what it is. The draft bill says it quote unquote demeans and mortifies the Italian language. And Italy is not the only country saying this. Take a look at India. Many now see English as the colonizer's language, which it is, technically. But today, more Indians speak English than Brits. So it's our language, too, complete with our own words and phrases in it. Nonetheless, the language police sees English as foreign and wants to make Hindi the dominant language. It is mandatory in schools in India. 70% of cabinet papers are now in Hindi. And this has triggered language politics. The non-Hindi speaking states complain about Hindi imposition. Another recent example of this language battle is Russia. Officials are banned from using most foreign words. President Vladimir Putin says he wants to protect Russia from what he calls a degenerate West. And so does France. They're officially obsessed with a centuries-long battle against English. And they're not playing games. Recently, they overhauled the use of English video game jargon. So no matter the country, one thing is clear, language is political. And its wars are being fought all over the world. There are political, cultural, and economic stakes. But why is the English language at the center of all of this? Because so far, it's winning. It is the world's most widely spoken language, with about 1.5 billion speakers. Though only 400 million people are native English speakers, 60% of the world's internet content is in English. And as for Europe, that is so keen on reducing English language usage, 100% of its students study English at some point. And why is the world obsessed with the English language? Why do so many people speak it? Because it pays, literally. In West Asia, employees with higher proficiency in English earn higher salaries. This goes anywhere from 5% in Tunisia to 200% in Iraq, as compared to the non-English speaking staff. In Argentina, 90% believe that English is an indispensable skill. In Asia and Europe, there is an unsaid rule of publishing in English. The top 10 journals in the world publish in English, and surveys say higher income is correlated with English proficiency. The fact is, Global language is based on economic efficiency. But that does not take away from the fact that it's important to preserve local languages. They should be protected. It is crucial to safeguard cultural heritage. It also protects the beauty of words. They're so often diluted or lost in translation. And protection of native language is part of the resistance to great powers. You see, the language debate is a complex one. But it's a war that must be fought, because language can be freeing just as it can be oppressive. After all, the limits of our language mean the limits of our world.